Hey there. Um, somebody on the Discord had asked me if I wouldn't mind just going through my my general workflow with um, with Affinity Designer. So this is going to be kind of a, an off the cuff video. I don't have any notes. I'm just gonna this is going to be you seeing me work. Um, so the first thing I do before I make any kind of art is I'm really bad at choosing my own palettes. So uh, there's a website you can go to. Uh, this is lowspec.com. I'll include a link in the description. Um, and I just go here for the palettes. So just from the main page, you can go to the palette list. And they have quite a few different palettes. And some of the palettes will have samples. Not all of them will. Um, the palette that I've been using for uh, this set of tutorials is... I think it's Mort versus Zooey, um, which I think is it's 32 or 36 colors. You don't have to stay directly to the colors of your palette, but by choosing a set palette ahead of time, you can ensure that your your game or whatever you're working on, here it is, your game or whatever you're working on will have a consistent um, feeling to the design. So I think this is the palette I'm using. Sorry for that weird cut. So this is the palette I'm using. Uh, you can just click on it, and then here are the uh, hexadecimal numbers for all the colors. I was just downloaded as a 32x PNG, and so just right-click and download. Uh, and then I will put that directly into Affinity Designer, and I will show you how I use that in just a second. All right, so here I am. Uh, I've opened up Affinity Designer, and any of the things I'm going to do here can be very easily translated to either Inkscape, which is free, um, it's easy to use on Windows, Inkscape is, but it's not so easy to use on Mac. Uh, it's a little it's a little fiddly. Um, you can also do this with Adobe Illustrator. Um, I don't like Adobe products because of the uh, subscription, and maybe that's you know completely stupid. They're the industry standard, though. Uh, I just like Affinity Designer. It is a paid program. I think it's a $50 one-time uh, fee, but then you, know, then you have it. I think it's less on the iPad Pro. I think it's like 20 bucks. But so here's how my workflow works. So first thing I would do is just create a uh, new file. And I'm going to make this 512 by 512. You always want to make your art larger than the pixel space you'll be working with. For example, on a phone, this uh, I'm going to be making a button. Uh, this button isn't actually going to take up 512 pixels. It's going to take up significantly less. But because I'm working on a a larger um, canvas, uh, it should work out just fine. So 512 by 512, my DPI is at 300, um, and I'll just click OK. And so now I've got this, this empty place. Now, uh, all of my palettes that I download from low spec, I keep those in a specific folder. I call it my inspiration folder. And then in my palettes here, um, these are all my palettes that I use to work with. Um, I'm going to grab that Mort V Zui palette, which is this one right here. I'm going to pull it into my scene. And then the very first thing we're going to do is just kind of zoom out and resize it so that it's kind of always there. So there we go. I got my palette in my scene here, make it nice and tall. And I'm going to have that on its own kind of layer. So I'm going to make a new layer. And I want my palette to be on top of that. So I'm just going to rearrange it over here in my layers panel to be up above. And then on this layer, um, let's see, what do we want to make? We're going to make a play button. So on this layer, I'm going to choose this rounded rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw a rounded rectangle. Now, this probably isn't the right size. I want it 512 by 384. So I pretty closely eyeballed that there. Um, I have my snapping set pretty high. So I'm going to snap it to the center in both directions. You can change your snap settings somewhere. Maybe it's edit. Is it a file? Maybe it's preferences. It's probably preferences. Um, <laughs> oh, this is also where you can find all of your shortcuts and stuff. Um, no. Performing. Okay, well, I'll find that at some point. But anyway, for now. Uh, I've got my, my button here. I want this to be a play button, so I'm going to choose a relatively middle ground green tone. So let's go with that. And the way that you use the eyedropper on here is a little different than from Adobe. You grab this circle, 
and then you pull it to what you want to do, and then that doesn't change anything yet. You then I'm gonna click my layer, and I'm going to mirror, mirror, click that eyedropper button. And there we go. I'm actually gonna start with a darker color here. Let's go a little bit darker. Uh, that's good. I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and you do that in Affinity by Command J, Control J if you're on Windows. I'm gonna make this slightly smaller. I'm gonna make it say 12 pixels smaller in each direction. So we'll go 500 and 372. And then I'm gonna recenter this. I'm also gonna make it a child of the bigger one. Um, so I'm just gonna pull it in there. And do do do. So this new rectangle here. Oop. No, I didn't mean to duplicate the layer, I duplicated the whole layer. Gross. All right, so there we go. So we've got our layer, and in our layer, we've got the main rectangle and the smaller rectangle. All right, so I'm gonna make the smaller rectangle a slightly lighter color of green. Ta-da. Now, I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can make uh, different types of buttons. I'm gonna just adjust that a tiny bit so it looks better. Um, let's start with something that looks uh, kind of glossy. So to make a glossy looking button. What I'm going to do is, uh, as a child of this second rectangle, the one that's lighter colored, I'm going to grab an oval and I'm just going to randomly make it there, I'm going to center it, bring it down a little bit. Now this is going to be like a, like a kind of glowing area. So there's a few different ways you can go about this. Uh, I'm going to do this in the more structured way. I'm going to grab the color that's lighter than the one that I've been using right there. And then I'm going to go over to effects and Gaussian blur. I'm going to turn that on and then I'm going to do just a whole lot of blur. In this case, let's do 25 pixels. So you can see already, if I jump over here and turn off my palette, you can see already that it's starting to look kind of like a, like a jelly button. Um, next thing I'm going to do is still with Let's make this a child of that rectangle. Uh, with this rectangle selected, I'm going to, again, with this ellipse tool, I'm gonna go in the other direction here. I'm gonna go top, up there. I'm gonna make sure that this is a child of that rectangle so that it's masked. And then I'm gonna have this be kind of even on both sides. You could go down a little bit. And then I'm gonna change the color here. So right now it's green. So let's make it, um, let's make it this super, super light blue maybe. All right, and then I'm gonna turn on the transparency. And this wine glass looking tool is a transparency and you can just draw where you want the transparency to come from. So like you can have it go down like that. I'm gonna have it actually go in the other direction. So like that. And then I'm even going to turn down the transparency of this layer. So I'm going to highlight that ellipse, and bring the transparency of the layer down. Now I have something that looks kind of like a, a skeuomorphic is the uh, the term for it. it. Looks like those old um, iPhone buttons. So what I want to do now is I want sorry for that weird cut. So what I'm going to do now is I want to add the play button, and you can use an actual play button, but I think it's kind of fun to make your own. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna go over here, left-hand side. I'm gonna grab the triangle tool. Just gonna make a random triangle. And I wanna make sure that this is at full opacity. Okay, and I'm gonna rotate this 270 degrees down here in the rotation, 270. And then I'm gonna center this and now I'm gonna round the edges. So uh, to do this, I'm gonna select the object. I'm gonna choose this rounded edge tool. I'm gonna to select all the edges and I'm gonna pull them in. I wanna do all the edges at once so that it's uh, uniform rounding so that it's not kind of this weird rounding. Now, what you'll notice here is that if you use the selection tool, the selection tool actually goes uh, further out than it should because this is still using the old triangle to compute everything. So to have it actually follow these paths I just made, I wanna to go to layer and I wanna convert this to its curves. 
and that'll make this actually have curves. And now I can go to my curve adjustment tool and I could actually adjust those curves if I wanted to. Um, so I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger because I lost some size when I adjusted it. I'll try and get this towards the center a little bit longer. There we go. Um, all right, cool. Now to give this a little bit of dimension, I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to take the one that's on the bottom here and move it a little bit to the right and down and I'm going to change its color. So I'm going to turn my color palette back on and I'm going to grab one of those shadow colors, one of the dark ones like that. And now, see that already looks like it has some dimension, but to make it look even more in line with the effect that we're going with, I'm going to turn on Gaussian Blur and blur it up a little bit. So there we go. Um, normally I do quite a bit of kind of going back and forth and deciding how I want things to be. Um, in this case, I'm going to kind of play with this just a little bit there. But, I mean, you can see what you're doing. Essentially, when you're working in a vector-based design program like this, your main focus isn't necessarily to draw as it is to focus on what shapes make up an object. And then you are kind of breaking down those shapes and rebuilding them by using these primitive tools. So there we go. Um, I'm going to do this for a few other things, only in kind of my style. And uh, I'll upload, I'll, or sorry, I'll add them to the, um, to the asset pack that's in on itch.io. And you guys can, can download that. So uh, I needed to make this anyway, because I needed to make a play button for uh, the scene, and then I'm going to make a settings button and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make that in my style, but I'll video it and I'll speed up the video while I'm doing it. So um, hang around for a second and you can see that. enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.